Good morning and welcome to the Elements of Judah Tribe online service. We are glad that you could have joined us. We are pleased that every Sunday you tune in and, and watch and, and be a part of what God is doing. So we encourage you to share this live video. Message someone quickly and tell them Elements of Judah Tribe is on YouTube and Elements of Judah Tribe is on Facebook. The service is about to get to begin. That they can get what God is saying to us in this time and in this season. So please enjoy our service. Worship with us. Raise your hands. Clap your hands. Bow before the Lord. Get your books and your pens and, and, and take some notes and reflect on what is being taught to you. God bless you. We praise no matter what we are going through. We stand firm on the word of God. Any other words are lies. We boldly confess we are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb. We are secure because God is our Father, Jesus is our Savior, and the Holy Spirit is our Comforter. We have life in its full abundance. We will learn from our experiences and we will never be the same. We are loved by God. We will live at peace with others. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the This is the air I breathe, your holy presence living in me. This is my
love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms. Never disconnected in his arms. I feel protected. There's no place I rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, in his arms. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There is no place I'd rather, rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. There is no place I I feel protected in his arms, never disconnected in his arms. I feel protected. There's no place I Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pastors. 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. We praise, O oh God, be magnified, O oh God, be, be lifted up, O oh God, be exalted, O oh God, we worship you this morning. We worship you, O oh God, you are great, and you do miracles so great. There is none like you, O oh God. We humble ourselves before you. We humble ourselves in your presence, O oh God. For in your presence, there's a fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pledges forevermore. So we praise your name, O oh God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Oh, we are honored to come before you this morning, O oh God. We are honored that we can pray. We are honored that we can say thanks to your name. We are honored that we can praise you, O oh God. We are honored that we can lift up your mighty name, for there is none like you. Your peace surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. Your peace is around our lives. Your love is around our lives. We are filled with your presence, Jesus. We are filled with your presence, O oh God. Oh, we glorify the name of the Lord this morning. Fill every home with love and peace and joy. Fill every, every, every district, O oh God, every continent, every state, every parish, with peace, love, and joy, O oh God, that your presence may be felt today, O oh God. And even as we release your word, O oh God, that others will come to know you as Savior. They will accept the truth, O oh God, and they will come into this marvelous love, this marvelous peace, and this marvelous joy. As we give you praise and we give you glory, we give you honor, O oh God, we give you thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, our King. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hosanna, hosanna, blessed be the rock of our salvation. This morning I come to you, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we honor him this morning. And we are grateful that we know him as Lord. We are grateful that he is our God. We are grateful that he is our King. We are grateful that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We are grateful that his presence fills our lives. We are grateful that he is good. We are grateful that he never changes and he remains the same. And we glorify his name this morning. So I greet you in Jesus' name. It's good to be here again as we wrap up our discipleship series, our thoughts and our discussion and our knowledge as we came into, as we look at discipleship. I have learned a lot personally, and I pray and trust that you have learned a lot as well and you're able to apply it to your lives. Um, as we always do when we do a series, we take time to recap and we take moments to look at what we have talked about. And we also take moments to reflect because it's important that we are not only hearers of the word, but we are doers of the word. We're able to apply the word of God to our lives. We're able to have God's word being actioned in our lives. So that's what we are doing. And that's what we do today. And uh, we'll share some additional information. But more importantly, we are going to recap because we want that this word or this series would have caused you to rethink how you live or would have caused you to rethink how you do God's business or how you go about doing things for the kingdom. So we trust that it has helped you and we also trust that you'll be able to apply it to your life. Praise the name of the Lord. So in, in, this, in this series, we talk a lot about learning to follow and follow to learn. Now, as I go through the Bible, it is always noted that when God was going to do something, and we would have mentioned this in another series, where God is going to do something, he always raises up a man or he always raises up a woman. He raises up a human being. And I call that human being a door or the doorway. I call it a human door. So God does not physically come himself because if he come himself, 
it will be chaos if he can, because your kind of glory would come with him. But God always raises up a man or a woman to lead, to reposition. And that's what God is doing in the earth today. He's raising up men and women. So there are many preachers and there are many teachers and so on. But you try the spirit to see which is of God and, and which isn't. So God has raised up men and women during this era, during this time of our lives, men to teach and exhort and to disciple. And that's what we have been talking about for the last few weeks. Now, if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, praise the name of the Lord. And it says, I will raise up for myself, this is our God speaking, a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart. And I will firmly establish his priestly house. And they will minister before my, my anointed one always. So God says here, I will raise up a faithful priest. So God will raise up a leader. And this leader or this person will do what is in my heart. Not what is in his heart, but my heart. And also what is in my mind, God's mind. And then God says, I will firmly establish his priestly house. So that which he, he's in charge of, God will establish it. And, and what? And they, they, this house will minister before my anointed one. Always. Who's the anointed one? Jesus Christ. So God is saying in this time and in this era, he will raise up a faithful person, a faithful priest. And these faithful people, or this first faithful person will do what is in God's heart and what is God's mind. From examining the scriptures, I've understand understood that the when God talks about his heart, it is generally about his people, it's generally about people. So God will raise up someone who will do God's heart or who would function in God's heart and mind as it relates to people. So this is why discipleship is important. So God will raise up a man or a woman. God will raise up a person who will go after the heart of God, who will teach persons about God, who will teach persons about the love of God, and so on. So God is, will raise up this, first, this faithful person. Hallelujah. So this is the time, this is the, this is the era that we're living in, that our Lord and Savior is raising up people to teach. You are one of them. You are one of them. It's not restricted to us who wears who wear colors. You know what I mean? It's not restricted to that. But God is restrict God is, is raising people, sorry, who will go around and teach. Go go around and disciple others. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. So the responsibility is not limited to the leader of a church, but it is it is it is it is it is extended to all of us. It is extended to persons who want the heart of God. And that's what Samuel is basically saying, or, or what the book of Samuel is saying, or what God is saying to us, that he will raise up someone who has my heart and who has my mind. Do you have God's heart and do you have God's mind? What is God's heart and what is God's mind? God always referred to his heart in terms of loving people, taking care of people. His, his heart is not buildings and structures, but his heart is people. So that's why we have to look after people. And that's why we have to give an account when we don't treat, treat people well and so on. Praise the name of the Lord. So God is raising us up to teach and disciple others, that we may teach them truth, that we may teach them what God says. Praise the name of the Lord. So God's position always is for us to teach and instruct he gives us information and you and i ought to teach and instruct we ought to give persons the information that god has given to us and as we learn we don't become like a fatted calf or we don't keep it for ourselves but we share with others 
We give others the information and the instruction that we have learned from our leaders. So as our teacher teaches us, then we teach others. Remember we said during the, the course of this series, it is always about each one reaching one, each one reaching the other. Praise the name of the Lord. So his purpose isn't limited to the ways and thoughts of man, but it, 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 it is however, or rather, however he uses man. So God's thoughts and his ways aren't limited to us. Remember we said um, Samuel, in the book of Samuel, that he will raise up a priest whose mind is after him or who has his mind. Praise the name of the Lord. So you and I ought to have God's mind. We ought to seek what is the mind of God concerning others, concerning our lives. Hallelujah. So we ought to go forth and teach others the way of Christ. We teach them the mind of Christ. All right. And as we go along, you'll see exactly what I mean. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important that we do that. It's important that we connect with this truth because in this truth lies great information. In this truth lies structure. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay? So, so God operates in such wisdom that if you and I, had, if you and I um, find, find ourselves in a place where we're taking his mind, it means then that we are able to teach great revelatory truth as we seek God's mind concerning our life and concerning the life of others. Now I'm going to, going to go to the um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and this is a lot of information here, but I really think that I need to take the time to go through it because I want you to understand that as you follow the commands of God, there's great blessings to follow the command of God. There's great blessing when we connect ourselves with the truth of God, our function in the truth and the, and the wisdom of Almighty God. Because we want that wisdom, we want that truth so that it affects our day-to-day -day life. Okay? So let, let's, let's read the scripture, um, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it says, And it came to pass, If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commandments when I have commanded thee, or which I have commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set. And he said, will set thee on high above, set thee high above all nations of the earth, and these blessings shall come upon thee, hallelujah, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall be. In hallelujah, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket. Wow, look at this information. This is great. So, so this is basically saying if we follow the commands of God, if we follow the teachings of God, if we follow the teachings which a leader has taught you, the man of God or the woman of God has taught you, then you are coming into great things. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed shall be when thou comest in. Blessed shall be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Hallelujah. They shall come. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and, and, and all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's keep going. The Lord shall bless thee and holy people unto him, as he have sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. The, and all people of the earth shall see, hallelujah, that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Hallelujah. He shall open unto thee his good treasure, 
The Lord shall give the rain unto thy land in his season. In his season. Not your season. His season. And to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And shall be above and shall not be beneath. You are the head and you are not the tail. And you shall be above and not beneath. Look at this blessing. And if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command, which I command thee this day, to observe and do them, thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I have commanded thee this day, to the right hand or to the left hand, or go to other gods to serve them. Praise the name of the Lord. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not, Hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy God, to observe all his commandments and his statutes, which I observe, or which I have commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come. O oh Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Look at the blessing in Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you this morning for this blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that if we are in obedient to you, we shall reap your blessing, O oh God, and we shall lack nothing, O oh God. We will be obedient. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Thank you this morning, O oh God, for this. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope that you have just connected with this blessing the way that I have. I hope that you've understood this blessing the way that I have. Because the Bible is saying to us that if we follow the commands of Almighty God, then we are blessed. We are blessed in our going out. We are blessing our coming in. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Our hands are blessed. Whatever we put our hands to are blessed. There is increase. Now Jesus commanded that we go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So the, 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 the command from Jesus Christ is that we go and teach. Are you going and teaching? Are you teaching others? Are you imparting godly truths and godly wisdom to others? Remember, we are talking about discipleship here. We are talking about, it, about obeying the command of our Lord Jesus Christ by going into the highways. And as we always say, going into the byways. As we go all these different places, are we using every opportunity to tell others about Christ? Are we using every opportunity to teach others the way of Almighty God? Or are we not doing it? The Bible says that if we, are, if we find ourselves where we are following the commands of God, the commandments of Almighty God, and these commandments are not only the 12 commandments, there are so many commandments in the Bible. Or we might not call them that, but there are so many instructions in the Bible, if you want to call them that then, that Christ has given. And this one that he has given to us, the great commission, the great instruction, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. The principle of, of, of adopting, the principle of understanding what God has given to us, it causes us to be bountiful. It causes us to flow. And the Bible says that God will allow, the, allow our enemy to rise up because right before that enemy, you will be blessed. But we have to follow the instruction given by Jesus Christ by going ye therefore and teaching all nations. Hallelujah. So we teach boys the way of, of God. We teach girls the way of God. We teach women the ways of God. And we teach men the ways of God. Because as we learn, when we go into the house of God and we learn, when we even watch on live like right here, when we, when we do all of these things, we are learning, we are getting information. Don't fill yourself with all the information and not share it with others. Share the information with others because there's great truth to the word of God. There's great wisdom right here. Hallelujah. So don't take it for yourself only. You tell your family about it. You tell your friends about it. Give them the necessary information that they're coming to truth and that they're coming to understanding because there's great wisdom and understanding in the word of God. So let's follow these commands. The book of Deuteronomy says that if we follow the commands, he will set us high. Do you want God to set you high? But then you obey his command. You do as Jesus Christ have instructed. Praise the name of the Lord. We do as Jesus has said to us. Go ye therefore and teach. Hallelujah. We find yourself reaching one. 
find yourself connecting with, with, with one because you want that you are doing the way of God. You are doing the instruction of God. You are going where God wants you to go. You are ministering to God, to ministering to others as God will have you to. Praise the name of the Lord. So as a disciple, we must do almighty God's instruction. We must seek what God is saying to us. And we will spend the last couple of weeks talking about discipleship. And I want you to not only be hearers of the, the word, but I want you to be doers. I want you to connect with the truth. Go back and watch what the, the message is over the last few Sundays on discipleship. See what the instructions are. See what the ways of God are concerning us. See what God will have us to do that we function in that place, that we function in what Almighty God has instructed us to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The, I, I, you know, I say, as I, as I think and I reflect and I, I, I go through in my mind what God has said to us in the last few weeks, God has given us so much information that there is no way that you and I ought not to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with others because the gospel is something good. And if it is good, then you are able to pass it on to others. If something is good for you, wouldn't you share it with others? I'm sure if you ladies go in town and, and you see a nice pair of shoes, you will call one of your girlfriends and you will say to them, girl, I saw a pair of shoes and they, are, they look so good. Wow, go and check them out at so-and-so place. And they will go and do that. So if you have Jesus Christ, why are you not telling others about Christ? Don't you want them to be free? Don't you want them to be, to be do you, don't you want them to continue living in bondage? I'm sure you don't. So if you don't, you, want, you tell them about Jesus Christ. Some may reject it, some may take it, but you are doing your, your, you are doing what the Lord God Almighty has, a command, has commanded you to do. Hallelujah. The Word of God teaches us to, how to behave. This is what we do when you, again, when you come to church and the pastor ministers to you or you're watching it here on live and so on. As this happens, then you, you, you teach others. So, so the scriptures is good for teaching. So you teach others. Teach others how to be responsible. Show them with Christ is a better way. Teach them the scriptures. Teach them the truth. Teach them how to love each other. All of this is discipleship. When you do this, you are discipling others. You are teaching them how to respond in a situation. You're teaching them to, to be in peace. You're teaching them when somebody speaks, you don't have to respond. You're teaching them not to cuss. Hallelujah. You're teaching them how to behave in a difficult situation. Don't run for a knife and stab. Don't run for a gun and shoot. But see how you can have a discussion and settle the matter. You're teaching them the ways of Christ. Hallelujah. As you disciple them. How to live as a disciple? You can take these basic things and, and, and share with others. Follow the teachings of your leader. Follow the teachings of your leader. If you are, if you can't follow the teachings of your leader, then you are at the wrong place. It is that simple. But you must be able to follow the teachings of your leader. You must be able to take from what that person has given to you and take it to others. That way it is magnified. Because you are believing it as the truth. And you want the, the, the world to get the truth. You want others to benefit from the truth. So you utter or mutter what you have been taught. Stay in the word of God. Always be in the word of God. Study the word of God. Read the word of God. Number three, meditate day and night. Meditate on the word of God. Mutter the word of God. Find yourself in a quiet place where you are meditating with the Almighty God. I know sometimes we make meditation, meditation seems like it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing, it's what you're meditating on. So meditate upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four, live a prayerful life. If you're going to live as a disciple, live a prayerful life. Always be communicating with Almighty God. Always be talking to God. Always be listening to God. Because prayer is in two four. You listen and you speak. Hallelujah. Number five, be slow to speak. 
Hallelujah. But be eager to listen. All of these are in the scripture. Be slow to speak, but be eager to listen. So always find yourself in the place where you're listening to others. Always find yourself in the place where you're listening to your teacher, what your teacher is saying to you, because that person is speaking revelatory truth to you. So it is your responsibility to listen and be slow to speak. Number six, number six, don't render evil for evil. Every time something happens, don't find yourself responding in evil, but respond opposite. Okay, the Bible says that it causes coals of fire to be heated on the person that you are turning the, the cheek with. So turn the, the other cheek, don't render evil for evil, is what I'm saying here and what the word of God teaches us. Number seven, cling or seek to that which is good. Cling or seek that which is good. So basically, that which is good, that which is wholesome, you cling to that if you're going to live the life of a disciple. So those are seven basic things. There, there's much more in the scripture, which I will want you to go and search, which I will want you to go and look up in the scriptures and see the way to live as a disciple, the way to live as a, as a child of God. God would have spoken to, to the apostles and they spoke about it. God would have spoken to the disciples and they mentioned it. There are a lot of things there that you and I can mention that you, we can live on as a disciple. So we, like I said, we have spent the last few weeks talking about discipleship. And today was basically a recap of giving some information. And I encourage you to read um, Deuteronomy chapter um, 28. Read the whole chapter, the whole chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 20, and see the blessings of God. But see what also disobedience does. So if you are going to be a disciple, we want to function in obedience. Okay. And if you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, you will see the blessing of obedience. You will see the blessing of Almighty God in that, in that chapter. But you'll also see, if you do the reverse, what will happen. So as disciples, we want to be obedient to our maker. We want to be obedient to our God. We want to function in obedience. Hallelujah. So I, I submit to you today, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whoever is watching our, our live service today, I submit to you today, be a disciple of God. Be a disciple of your pastor. Utter the words of your leader. Utter the words to those from those who speak truth to you, that you live a better life, that you live a life of peace. That even though situations come up in your life, hallelujah, you will still have the peace of God because you are functioning in obedience. And that is what God wants us to do, function in obedience. So don't be a disobedient disciple. Be an, be an obedient disciple. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and you'll see what I'm talking about. Praise the name of the Lord, because there are great blessings in there for us. There's great blessing from the Lord if we are obedient. I pray that you will have a great week. I pray that you will want to walk in obedience. I pray that you will want to walk in wisdom and in truth. And that is the way of Almighty God. Wisdom and truth. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, pray the simple prayer. Jesus, I come. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess that you are my Lord and I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have done, if you have just prayed that prayer, welcome into the family of Christ. Welcome to the life of discipleship. So do like the woman at the well. Go and tell others what Jesus has done for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, bless your people. Bless their lives. We pray for children. 
We pray for doubts all over the world today, oh God. We declare that they are a blessing. We bless their going out and their coming in. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to, and this is this just came back into my spirit, so again I say, please read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and see what God will say to you there. If you're celebrating a birthday this week, we wish you a happy birthday. We pray God's blessing upon you. If you are celebrating a marriage this week, we wish you a happy anniversary. And God will bless your life and continue to bless that which he has bring into place. If you are celebrating on the birth of a, a baby, bless that baby. I declare that that baby is a blessing and newness is in your life and that baby is a blessing to you. So we wish you a great Sunday. We wish you a wonderful day, a great week. And the blessings of God will be upon you. The blessings of the Lord addeth rich and it addeth no sorrow. So God bless you. We take care. Until next time, God bless. can we be successful by living life God's way? Join me, Pastor Brian Callender, and a special guest each week as we discuss aspects of life and share nuggets with you so that you can be the best person God designed you to be. Join us every Thursday at 6 p.m. on social media as we share and challenge you to be the best that God will have you to be. Grab a friend, sit down and watch and actively participate of what God will do as we share. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning in our live service. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Every Sunday we appreciate your support and watching. Those of you who share the live, those of you who share anything that's on the Elements of Judah Tribe page. We are grateful, we are thankful. What you are helping us do is spread the gospel all over the world. And we appreciate that. We cannot do it by ourselves. So we are so happy that you take the time to put your finger on that mouse and click share or click like. So please continue to do that for us. Please continue to do that with us. We are grateful for your support. Thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of myself and the leadership, my spiritual father, my spiritual mother, and all those associated with the elements of Judah tribe. We are grateful. Thank you very much. God bless you richly.